Hello everybody, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music, and today we're gonna to go ahead and continue our beginner guitar lesson series using the Hal Leonard Guitar Method, book one. Let's get started. All right, so today we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at page 31 here in the Hal Leonard Beginner Guitar Method, book one. In this lesson, we are gonna learn three new songs. We're also gonna discuss a new concept called repeats, talk about repeat signs and how those work. All of the exercises in this lesson are gonna include eighth notes, which we learned in our previous lesson. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure you check it out before moving on to this lesson. Before we get started, as always, I will remind you to head on over and check out my Patreon page and consider becoming a patron today. As a patron of Nick Tolman Music, you have a lot of great resources available to you, including a weekly video lesson series where you as a patron get to ask questions and I answer those questions for you in a weekly video. You also get access to early guitar lesson content. Becoming a patron is also just a great way to say thank you to Nick Tolman Music for the content that you're receiving here on YouTube, as well as a great way of staying motivated and staying accountable. That small monthly charge of as little as $3 a month to be a patron is a great reminder and a great motivator for you to stick with the goals that you've set for learning the guitar. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. The first exercise that we're going to look at is exercise 69. It's called Sea Shanty. All right, you'll recognize this melody for sure. It is gonna utilize eighth notes. So just like we talked about in our last lesson, it's really important to spend time just counting the eighth notes, right? One, two, and three, four, and. Definitely spend time counting the eighth notes. If you need to review how to do that, please uh, see our previous lesson uh, for more information on that. But this exercise is also gonna include what's called a repeat sign. You'll notice that at the very end of the song, there is uh, what looks like just the regular end of the song, but there are two dots right before that final bar line. Whenever you see this, that means it's a repeat sign. It literally means that you're going to repeat back. I remember when I was a kid and I first learned about repeat signs from my very first music teacher, they, they told me to think of it like those little dots or like little springboards, you know, and you hit it and it's going to just bounce you right back. And that's great. Now, in some cases, like this one, you're going to repeat all the way back to the beginning, right? Because there's no forward repeat sign. Now, if you ever see a forward repeat sign, which looks just like that, but the dots are on the other side of the bar, that means that you're only going to repeat back to that forward repeat sign. Now we'll see this later in the music and we'll talk about it more, but for now in the music, whenever you see it, you're basically just gonna repeat all the way back to the beginning, all right? After the repeat, you'll play the music again, and then you'll end. You'll just repeat once unless it tells you to do otherwise. Sometimes it might say repeat twice or repeat three times or whatever, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at Sea Shanty. I'm gonna play, play it for you at 72 on the metronome, then we'll talk through it a little bit. Here we go. One, two, ready and play. And that's the idea. Okay, so starting at the beginning, we're starting on A and we're playing quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth. One, two, and three, four, and one, 
two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, so just keeping that in mind as far as quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth. We're always subdividing in our head. We're always thinking one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. And that's really gonna help us stay in time. All right, now it also has some stroke indications, right? So above the first note, that little symbol that we see, just as a reminder, we've talked about this before, but that is the downstroke symbol. That means you're gonna pick downwards, right? And then we have another downstroke, and then we have the one that looks like the V, right? And that is an upstroke. So essentially what's gonna happen is whenever we have these eighth notes, we're gonna play them as down, up, right? So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down, down, right? That's the idea. So just whenever you see the eighth notes, get in the habit of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, all right? So there are some chords for this exercise. Um, however, we have not learned these chords and they are grayed out. So you do not have to learn these at this point. If you want to try to look ahead and learn the D minor chord, that's totally fine, the A minor chord. Uh, but you do not have to at this point. So I'm gonna play the chords and go ahead and add the melody right to it so you can hear what they sound like together for practice purposes. Feel free to play along, practice along with this track as well. So here we go. Here is the chords and melody at 72. One, Two and ready and play. And there it is at 72 on the metronome. Let's go ahead and bump that tempo up. Here is 120 on the metronome, exercise 69, C shanty. One, two, oh, one, two, ready, play. Let's go ahead and add the chords to that. Chords and melody at 120. One, two, oh, one, two, ready, play. So our next exercise is called Frère Jaca. And we are gonna go ahead and play it. It's in the key of G. So we have an F sharp in the key signature and we're gonna play F sharps throughout. I'll go ahead and play it for you at 72 and then we will uh, try it at a faster tempo. But here is 72 on the, mer on the metronome. Oh, one, two, 
Ready and play. All right, so this one has chords uh, with it as well. However, you'll notice it's just one chord through the whole thing, it's just G. All right, so super simple, nothing fancy there. Um, this song is also oftentimes done as a round, right? So you might hear people start singing, Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca, and then the next group starts. Frere Jaca, right when the first group is Dormez-vous, Dormez-vous, right? So that's something you can think about as well if you're playing with other people as a round. This one works really great, all right? So let's go ahead and bump the tempo up. We're going to do it at 120, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So here's 120 on the metronome, Frere Jaca. One, two. Oh, one, two, ready, play. And you'll find actually that the trickiest part of this is when you start getting it at that faster tempo is just getting those eighth notes clean. Because this is the first exercise where we have eighth notes that are switching strings amid the eighth notes, right? So if you need to isolate that particular spot, please do so by all means. All right, so here's what it might sound like as a round. One, two, oh, one, two, ready, play. And lastly, as always, if you're wanting to sing this one as well, start out by just singing along while you play the melody until you get really comfortable with that melody before adding the chords. And in this case, the chord is just a G, so it would be. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong. Just play a G chord. This is a great one to practice singing and playing strumming because you're not having to worry about changing chords, just getting that coordination down. This one's really good for that. All right, let's go ahead and move along to the next exercise. This is Snake Charmer. We're going to go ahead and start it. We're going to play it for you at 72, and then we'll build it up. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three. Now you actually find that 72 might be a little fast uh, for you on this one, and it's perfectly fine to start slower. If you need to start your metronome at 60 or 54 or whatever, start as slow as you need to to feel comfortable on this one. Now let's talk about it a little bit. There's a couple things in here that are just great, and I, and I really like this point in the book where we're getting into some music where we can start talking about some more options, logistical things on the instrument to help make it easier for you and more effective. All right, so starting out again, we have eighth notes and quarter notes. We've been dealing with that for the last couple lessons now. It starts on beat four. We have four and one, two, three, four and 
<laughs> now this is the spot and this is the first time that we're going to kind of break from our standard first position fingerings now again we talked about this at the very beginning but it might not be that clear to you right now right now we're playing everything in what's called first position which is all notes that happen on the first fret are going to be with our first finger all notes that happen on the second fret are our second finger third fret is controlled by our third finger and any notes controlled on the or that happen on the fourth fret are going to be controlled by the fourth finger right one two three four kind of just staying in that box now that's not how you always have to do and you'll notice you've seen guitar players playing way up the neck doing all kinds of things all over the fretboard and that's the eventual goal but it's a slow process to get there to where we feel comfortable playing and understanding the fretboard so this is the first time in the book where there is a place for us to kind of break a little bit just for a moment maybe out of first position right and it happens in the second full measure where we have the four eighth notes in a row we have c e b c a now it's really subtle but what happened there is i'm trying to avoid something Okay, if we played those all in first position, we would have C, E with our second finger, and then we'd have to jump with our second finger down to B. Which is fine if you're playing slow, but if you have to play that fast, it gets a little bit muddy, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna play the C, my third finger, like I normally would, play the E with my second finger like I normally would, but then I'm actually just gonna sneak my first finger down and play the B with my first finger. But now, look, what? What's happening is my first finger is on the second fret, not on the first fret, right? This is the first time that we've done this. And then that C, I'll go ahead and just play with my second finger because I'm already right there. And then, open and as soon as the open string happens I reset back to first position back to normal notes right so let me just do that for you nice and slow I'm gonna zoom in on the left hand so you can see exactly what's happening and I'm actually gonna start on the eighth notes just before that uh, the last two eighth notes of the first full measure okay so here we go nice and slow What that's going to do is that's going to make it easier for me to play it faster in the long run. Right? It's a lot cleaner. All right? And then moving on, we have more eighth notes. And then we're going to do the same thing again, the same little trick. in those last in that last measure all right let's go ahead and add the chords to that so you can hear it again these chords are grayed out so you do not have to play them but you can look ahead and try to learn these chords if you would like here we go one two three four one and two and three Let's try it at a faster tempo. Here is 120 on the metronome. One, two, oh, one and two and three. And there it is. Again, build your way to that tempo. Uh, take it nice and slow, slowly building up that metronome until you get to that faster tempo. Here it is with the chords at 120. One, two, three, four, one and two and three.
And that's our lesson for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will see you at our next lesson. Thanks.